So a few days ago, YouTube suggested I watch some video called How We Built a $2,000 Custom Gaming PC. With the Trump Turf Wars, this might become a, a thing because most graphics cards, memory modules, etc., are going to jump up in price if the turf war goes through. We could be paying as much as 20%. Just so you know, be ready for some dark times. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. This wouldn't happen if you motherfuckers voted for goddamn Joe Exotic. First thing is, I am not cutting my hair. I'm not changing the way I dress. I refuse to wear a suit. I am gay. I've had two boyfriends most of my life. I currently got legally married, thank God. It's finally legal in America. I've had some kinky sex. I have tried drugs through the younger years of my life. I am broke as shit. I have a judgment against me from some bitch down there in Florida. And don't forget, I am now stepping my foot in the ring to run for president. And this is all paid for by the committee of Joe Exotic Speaks for America. I am a real American. We probably get to have tigers if you put Joe Exotic in office. So this video was suggested to me. I ignored it because usually I look at the thumbnails. I see who made the video, The Verge. The Verge is like this weird thing. You ever notice there's like this whole ton of YouTube channels that are popular and you have no clue how they got all these subs because most of the crap they put out is exactly that. Pure garbage. Oh crap, I forgot. Everybody now has like a sponsor or product placement at the beginning of their video. So I'm doing that too. This video was brought to you by Aki and Aki's Tea. Please buy it. Americans customers. Hello. Ah. Uh, mm, ah. Uh, my. My Japanese tea, please. Thank you. It's been three days since this was put up. You can give a like or dislike, but they won't show the ratio, so you know it's bad. And you can't leave any comments, so you know it's real bad. We have a big team of tech reporters with a deep understanding of tech and how it affects the world we live in. But most of all, I'm excited to hear from you. YouTube is all about community, and we're gonna be an even bigger part of it. You lie, you lie, you never lie so damn much. I'm gonna try and watch this with you, or I'm gonna try and watch it and make it tolerable because this is actually worse than I originally perceived it to be, which is rare. So a few years ago, TC, or managing editor, built a gaming desktop, but it's kind of out of date. Oh, this video is brought to you by Capital One. Capital One, one of the worst companies you can get a credit card from. And it's definitely not gonna hold up for Battlefield Five. So let's build a new one. You can build a gaming desktop for around $1,000, but I wanna go all out, so I spent around 2,000. You don't need to build a gaming desktop for a thousand fucking dollars. That is a sweeping generalization. This sort of stuff is what leads console gamers to believe the hype. And they always run around and go, you get a console for $400, you get a gaming PC. You need to spend $1,300. You always hear something like that. And it's because they see these sort of videos that are completely full of misinformation. There's a guy on my Discord right now, got a gaming PC for $600. And the only difference between this and his is the graphics card. PC like this is gonna be able to play most games at ultra settings. So what do you need to build a desktop? Well, of course, first you need a table. Preferably not metal. If it's gonna be metal, have an anti-static working surface layered on top of it, a thermal paste applicator. What the fuck do you need a thermal paste applicator for? An Allen wrench. I haven't needed an Allen wrench to build a computer in so long, it's not even funny. The last time I used an Allen wrench, I was working on like a motorcycle. What the fuck is this? Some tweezers to tie up the wires. What the fuck did I just hear, Lance? Tweezers? Those are zip ties. Wait, why did he call them tweezers? A Swiss Army knife, which hopefully has a Phillips head screwdriver in it. A Swiss Army knife that hopefully has a screwdriver in it. You're building a PC not getting a merit badge. You spent two G's on this fucking computer and nobody at this damn office has a screwdriver set? Like a small one at all? Are you for real? Th this video alone already shows you how much The Verge knows about anything. So from now on, take every video they do with a grain of salt. 
Because right here, I'm already just like, what the fuck am I watching? And last but not least, an anti-static bracelet, which is to protect you and the parts. Isn't the anti-static bracelet supposed to have like a connector that grounds you? It's just a rubber band around his hand. These are the parts you're gonna need, but more importantly, before we get there, we need to understand what- Oh God, this shit is already bad and I'm less than a minute in. Why am I doing this shit to myself, man? <laughs> I'd rather go fight a bull. Basically, the video then goes into a nicely animated fucking spiel with a decent script in the sense of they present to you that they know exactly what they're doing and talking about. But fancy animated transitions and a well-written script doesn't mean much of shit because the further you get in this video, you find that they really don't know what they're doing. I mean, this can fool the average person. They see this fantastic presentation and they think, Wow, this is professional. This is so professional, they must know what they're talking about. This is a trusted news source. And it's wrong. This should scare you. This right here should be also a clear indication of your local news. Just because it has production value and money behind it doesn't mean it's right or informative. In fact, they could be feeding you the wrong information, such as this guy is doing. By the way, once again, it's presented by Capital One obey your credit master race we have a lot of boxes and a lot of pc parts so it's best you unbox them isolate the parts that you really need place items into the case and make sure that they all fit and then start working and now we're i don't think you need to take everything out to build the pc that doesn't make any sense unless you have like a huge workspace and even then i usually take out the parts as i'm working on them one by one but that's just me really going to start building by adding the motherboard in some notes about installing motherboards, they're really delicate, you should be really careful with them. And screw in with confidence, but also don't screw in too hard, otherwise you could crack the board. I chose Asus's Z370 motherboard for two main reasons. One, it has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and also it has support for NVMe SSDs, meaning you can get really fast SSDs that are really easy to install. Pay close attention to the brace that goes at the back of the computer. Why would you even really want to get a, a motherboard because of Wi-Fi? I mean, if you're building this for gaming, the last thing you want to do is be on motherfucking Wi-Fi. Why don't you cripple yourself by wearing an eye patch while you're at it? I mean, what are you thinking? I got this because it had Wi-Fi. That way I can play Battlefield 5, you and 12 other people. You always have to make sure that you really hammer it in because there's no screw. It really just has to go outside of the case. And you don't have to hammer in that, uh backplate shielding thing. I forgot what the hell it's called. It just it pops right in. You just push it in and then snap. Clasp onto the frame. And this is very important because otherwise you can't align the motherboard correctly with the holes. We're just gonna start installing all eight screws. I don't understand why he's putting in the, uh, the motherboard, but the CPU isn't installed. And he didn't install the RAM first either. Like, I, it could be personal preference the RAM. But you, the rule of thumb is usually you put in the CPU and the RAM first before you put it in there. So next we're going to install the RAM on the motherboard. I chose Corsair's 16GB Vengeance LED RAM for two main reasons. One, it has LEDs and we do like lights in our gaming desktops. Secondly, uh, it's pretty fast RAM. It's 2,666 megahertz, I believe. So it's pretty fast, and this motherboard supports that speed, which is most important. 266 megahertz is not fast RAM. That's like the baseline speed of RAM right now for DDR4. If you were using a Ryzen CPU or a Threadripper CPU, that low RAM would really hinder your workflow and gaming experience. Oh boy. Who hired this guy? This is like the perfect case of, like, this reminds me of my entire job experience where I couldn't land a job that I was good for, like I'd have been perfect for. For some reason, I couldn't get that job, but I'd be damned if it wasn't someone they hired that was a complete fucking, just, a, just, just an idiot. Or maybe not even an idiot, it's a guy who doesn't know what he's talking about and he has the job. You know, who, no one there must have known what the hell was going on. The camera person, the editor, nobody looked at this thing and said, it's all wrong. We're shooting it again. No one, which means the entire system 
based around this to do this video everyone there didn't know their ass from the elbow that's what it tells me the verge is just full of people incompetent well the editors are good I, I should take that back i guess the guy who knows how to do little animations and after effects wouldn't know how to build a pc which is weird i mean if you work on a pc it would it would behoove you to be somewhat tech savvy i would think there'd be like a guy who races cars you know at a racetrack and you don't have a team it would be a smart move to understand how to work on your own vehicle just in case something went wrong. At least know how to change out your damn brakes. And this motherboard supports that speed, which is most important. It's baseline speed, my dude. It's not fast. Open the slots first and just aligning the stick with the middle of the strip, not with the end, and just lining that up with the logo. So once you hear that solid clasp and you don't see the gold connectors on the side anymore, that's when you know the RAM is in. Step three, we're going to install- Wait, what? Okay. Okay, zoom in here. Oh my fucking god. The dude put his RAM in the wrong places. What is- they're right next to each other. So he used, like, I- it's either like he used a two slot and the three slot together. What the fuck is this? Like, I, w I wish I could get an overhead view of this. How did he even get this thing to boot up? How did he do this? It was a miracle of God that this... How? 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 They wouldn't have posted this if it didn't work. Or maybe, like, it didn't work, and then they, like, checked it out, and then they Google it, and they're like, Oops, we put the RAM in the wrong dims, ha <laughs> ha. And then they didn't even bother to edit this shit. Install the hard drive, or in this case, the NVMe SSD. I chose this format of solid state drive so that I could input it into the motherboard without having to worry about extra wires or putting it in a separate part of the case and just getting really messy. Six and a half hours later. I want you to remember what he just said about the case and getting really messy in the extra wires. Remember that. This is from Kingston and it's 480 gigabytes, so it's not a lot, but you can always upgrade this and swap it out, and it's only held down by one screw and the latch, so it's really simple. 480 gigabytes is not bad for a boot drive SSD. And really straightforward. Speed for gaming is important when it comes to a hard drive. You want files to write quickly, and you want games to load quickly, so that's why it's best if you use an SSD. This is also factually incorrect. The SSD offers minimal gains as far as most games when it comes to gaming like the best you could hope for with an ssd is like if you're playing maybe star citizen it would help if your game was on an ssd because that thing is just so fucked uh if you're modding games then an ssd would be a considerable help especially if your skyrim or whatever has 250 plus mods then it makes sense to put it on an ssd but if you're playing something like i don't know deus x it really wouldn't matter it, it really wouldn't. You use like a big hard drive for all your goofy games and you use the SSD for your boot drive and editing and so on and so forth. At least I do. Okay, so step four, we're going to install the graphics card. I chose PNY's GTX 1080, which is overclocked. And so it's a pretty easy installation. You're just going to find the gold. I don't like PNY graphics cards. On top of that, we have yet to install the CPU connectors. And you're going to line this bracket with the back end bracket of your PC case. Now, which lane you choose depends entirely on what other parts you're gonna put in the system. I'm just gonna pick the top one because the SSD is at the bottom and I don't wanna cover it. I just think it looks nice. Like he has no idea about the different bandwidths. He's just like, oh, you use those for different things. Yep, the, dim the RAM is in the first and second dim slots. Excellent choice. Wow, dude, fucking wow. That's amazing. This is their tech guy. Good work, Verge, you fucking thieves. Click down. Take your remaining brackets and just put them in the spots that you haven't used. You don't have to screw these in. They get bolted down by the back end bracket. And your GPU is installed. Power supply time. I chose Corsair's 850 watt power supply because I need enough headroom for ray tracing GPUs when they come out and I don't want to have to upgrade it again. Okay, he needs enough headroom for the ray tracing GPUs. How much wattage does a ray tracing GPU use anyway? Let us find out. You know, let's not even bother. I highly doubt ray tracing GPUs have that much power hunger over the 10 series cards. So all you have to do is take the brick 
and make sure that you align it with these little insulating pads so that the power supply doesn't short circuit and come into contact with the rest of the system. Ah, I didn't know that there were insulating pads for PSUs. Funny how every computer case I've ever used didn't have insulating pads. I'd almost think those were there to keep it from scratching against the metal. And isn't the PSU by design made so that it wouldn't short circuit? Once again, this is putting out misinformation that would make the average person think, oh wow, there's so much to this. I'd be worried I'd short circuit my computer when I put in my power supply. I'll just stick with my PlayStation 4 Pro. I don't need all this headache and it costs $2,000 to make. So just take it in, slide it in nice and easy until you have a snug fit and then shift it to the back and make sure it's right up against the frame. Most people uh, install the wires first before they put in the PSU. That way it makes uh, plugging in all of those connectors so much easier. I'm a victim of doing this wrong myself, to be honest. Now you just take the required screws and you tighten and screw in. So next step, we're going to install the CPU core. In this case, it's gonna go on the top end of the case and we're just gonna have the hose hang out for a little while until we install the processor, which is gonna come a little later. It's just wrong. Once again, it's all wrong. Instead of installing the damn CPU first, he's going to install the AIO cooler. You don't want to do this. You really don't. Don't listen to this guy. He doesn't know what he's doing at all. He really doesn't know. The fact that he's paid to make this video should tell you a lot about how fuck things are. The fact that The Verge put out this video should tell you the level of quality control for what they're putting out is. Always be sure to try to place it in the system first before you install it, because you can see it takes up a lot of space. But in this case, no pun intended, it fits in perfectly and we're gonna start screwing it in. And so there's nothing special about this screwing in process. They're just really long screws because they go through the entire frame of the cooler and they take forever. Oh, 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 oh my God, stop! Oh my God, oh my God. He's really doing this. He's using the long screws that you use to attach the fans to the goddamn radiator. What the fuck, dude? What the actual fuck? The fact the video's still up is amazing. Maybe The Verge had comments up, you guys would learn that you did something wrong. Sometimes comments from people help you understand your mistakes. And they take forever. Cause you're doing it wrong. They take forever, cause you're doing it wrong. What? I'm pretty sure, I'm not 100% sure, that there are instructions that come with everything from the cooler to the motherboard. And this guy just didn't bother to look at them. You can imagine how many computers he's fucked up in his life. No, maybe this is his first one, forget. This is so bad. This, doesn't even, this seems like a troll video. So next up, cables. Every power supply is gonna come with a big bag of Velcro cables. It's kind of daunting at first, so you always have to find the ones that are gonna fit. In this case, you need to match those cables with the correct descriptions on the power supply. No, can read. Next step is we're connecting the power supply to the motherboard with a 24 pin cable. We're just matching that cable from the motherboard, threading it through the back, and attaching the 24 pin header to the power supply so that we can have one of the connections complete. The next few additions will be for the GPU, for any specific ports that the case has, for any lighting that the case has, the CPU cooler, the anything else really. We're installing the CPU, the heart of the computer or the brain, depending on how you look at it. And if having a breakdown watching this, I apologize. I can't even make this funny. This is tragic. So to do this, we're just gonna remove the plastic covering that they put on the motherboard. We're just gonna take this little plastic part out. We'll just toss that out of here. And now we have an exposed CPU. You can just lift it up. The plastic covering comes with that top bracket. You stick in the CPU, close it down, plastic covering pops out. Or you could take it out if you want. Either or works, but you know. 
Oh, there goes the instruction manual. He finally broke it out. You holder, or rather slot, on the motherboard. And we're gonna use the CPU applicator. This is a special little part that- Why the fuck do you need a CPU applicator? What, what? Oh, let's just move on. Not everyone may get, but this motherboard that we got from ASUS definitely does have. It's called a CPU installation tool. It makes it really useful if you want to install a Core i7 Hexacore CPU. Yeah, we've got one. <gasps> no. No. And it's an eighth generation chip and it's ready to go. And it supports overclocking. I have so a feeling you would know how to this overclock, little dude. installer does for you is it's basically a brace that you can apply right to the CPU. You don't need this. Don't listen to him. This man knows nothing. He knows absolutely nothing. How he has a job amazes me. He's probably a college graduate. Remember that. This is a college graduate, most likely. He probably passed with some good honors or something. And he doesn't know his ass from his elbow. The future is dark. And light it up with the triangles that you'll see on the bottom left corners. And this will make it easier for us to apply it to the motherboard and then apply thermal paste and then apply a CPU cooler on top. And we're just gonna carefully lean it down into the system and make sure that everything lines up and we're gonna clasp down on it and we'll be good to go. So we're about to apply thermal paste to the CPU. Every CPU cooler actually comes with a bit of thermal paste. You don't need to apply thermal paste. Someone stop him. There's already thermal paste on the Corsair, what is that, the H150i Pro? Why are you doing this? Already neatly applied in a circle around it. You don't need any more, stupid. Why would you do, look at that. It's already there. Stop now. But it's usually not enough. It's It's not enough. Oh my God. Jesus fucking Christ. This man has a job. I wouldn't trust him to stack eggs because he'd fuck it up somehow. <laughs> I thought it'd be smart to put a pallet on top of the eggs so that they'd be protected. Good, essentially PC building practice to have a little bit extra and layer it on top of the CPU. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no, no, no! No! How much fucking... <laughs> Look at all this thermal paste. What are you doing? You're making a... Me no. Oh my. This is not real. The final portion is to add the CPU cooler to the top end of... Okay, listen. If you already have an AIO cooler, they come with their own paste. You can use that. It is fine. If you want to use a better thermal paste, then you remove the thermal paste on the copper plating of the AIO. You don't add extra thermal paste ever. You don't double down, you don't add that much. You do like one little drop of it, you know, like a bead on, you know, the traditional Intel and Ryzen CPUs, you know, the normal size one. On a Threadripper, you probably have to be more, you do have to be more generous with it, just saying. But Jesus Christ. I can't get through this. The processor. So you're gonna see that there are four brackets or rather like screws in here. No one has fixed the RAM. With brackets and holders right here. And they're going to keep the cooler raised off the processor, but it's also gonna be close enough to actually physically- This is a hot fucking it, mess. Basically keep it cool. Take thumb screws like this and just screw them on. So now that our internals are done, we're gonna put all the panels back on, which is the top glass, side glass, front glass, and of course the back panel where all this fun stuff is happening. So we fully built the PC, everything's put together, and we got to the post screen. So we fully built the PC and it's a fucking mess. The, the tubing of the cooler is on the back plate of the graphics card. What's next? Well, you need a USB flash drive with your Windows installation media on it. And of course, a license key. You technically don't need a license for Windows. I just get licenses for Windows now because they're like $12. From most fucking sites, Tweaktown is always giving links to get Windows 10 Pro for $12. Use special promo code Tweaktown. So I plug that up 
installed Windows in a couple of minutes, installed a bunch of drivers, and now we have a fully functioning gaming PC ready to run some games. Right now I've got Armor 3 running, running at maximum settings, native resolution, which is 1080p. I want to see where, like, does he even notice that he only has 8 gigabytes of RAM and not 16? HD. And it's running pretty smoothly. Like, um, I'm averaging 70 and 80 FPS, and this is normally like a very intensive game to run. And it's still doing a pretty good job. So right now I'm playing League of Legends. It's one of my favorite games. I'm actually playing against a bot, and I'm distracted, so I'm not actually doing so well. But um, otherwise, like, this is pretty much what you would see me do on a gaming computer. Test stuff out, and hopefully have really high frame rates like I am. He looks like he's a League of Legends player. Look at those keystrokes. This guy's a fucking pro. At frame rate, because I can get around 300 FPS playing League on maximum settings, which is a little bit absurd, and you don't really need that, so I locked it. Building a gaming desktop has been a great experience. I'm able to max out a lot of my favorite titles, and I'll be able to play a lot of upcoming titles like Battlefield 5 and Cyberpunk 2077 without worrying. Great. When The Verge test mark, this is going to be the benchmark PC for The Verge. This hodgepodge, poorly put together computer with the absolute worst wire management you have ever seen. And the RAM that's supposed to be running dual channel only has one dim slot in the correct area. And no one at The Verge looked at this and said this looks right. No one said something seems off. This is utterly atrocious. He's using League of Legends as a benchmark for the PC. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you've built a computer before yourself or how you would spend $2,000 on your own build. I'm really interested in seeing what sort of parts you guys would get. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to The Verge if you haven't already. Oh, he wants you to give you your comments. How can you do that? The comments are blocked. Probably because within the first day, everyone told him what a fucking moron he was and how stupid The Verge is. So how do we build a custom gaming PC? Well, it's not important to build your own Windows desktop. In fact, it's a great way to learn about what makes most computers tick. Build your own desktop in a great way to ensure you have a computer that perfectly suits your current and future needs. Here, Stefan, shows us how to build your own gaming desktop. Subscribe to The Verge Science on YouTube, a new home base for our explorations in the future of science. Nah, judging by how you guys put this video out about building a PC, it would, meet, it would lead me to suspect that everything you say is uh, not to be trusted. If you're anything like me, you would have then found yourself interested to see the comments that surely The Verge would have gotten on their Twitter page. Because unlike other social media platforms, you can't block out comments on Twitter. And as expected, people handed The Verge their ass. Even Linus Tech Tips jumped in by going, I'd actually love to come out and help if you want to do a part two or follow up to this. I'm not 100% sure if Linus is trolling, or if Linus is just genuinely trying to get his face everywhere to continuously get subscribers. NVIDIA is controlling the ability of add-in board partners to seed RTX cards to the press for independent evaluation, and like, they have asked for reviewers' email and phone numbers. So with the list of reviewers have been submitted to NVIDIA, and then NVIDIA has put together its own list of approved reviewers and sent their approved list back to let them know who they're allowed to sample cards to. For a reviewer to have access, they must sign NVIDIA's multi-year NDA. Um, honestly, nothing here really raises alarm bells for me. Uh, we signed NVIDIA's NDA. Even I would take a pass on this and turn my nose up on it. Ironically, his fan base uh, begged him not to do so which I found quite humorous. Oh, bloody buggery fuck. Stupid computer, you cunt. Now, as I said before, you would expect a litany of people that know something about putting together a computer to rip Verge a new asshole, and rightfully so. This video is grossly misinformed. Also, on some of their professional photos of this great PC build, someone points out that the CPU cooler is missing one of its goddamn knobs that holds it in place. It's just gone. 
Like this level of gross negligence and lack of an ability. Oh my God, the cable management is retarded. They're just zip ties to be there for no reason. Still, no one has put the RAM in the correct slot yet. It's ridiculous. Just seriously, gross negligence, misinformation, lack of understanding what they're doing, and there is no excuse. Considering there are countless videos on YouTube showing you how to put together, and what do they do? They put out this piece of shit. It's sad, really. It's pathetic. It's an egregious mistake. They even block comments. And in doing so, this stops people from giving their two cents. Granted, it'll be a lot of negative responses, but it will leave people just going through who are new to PC building, usually only checking out verified channels or stuff that YouTube deems is worthy, because obviously YouTube would suggest this video even though it's wrong and would actually lead to someone messing up their computer. But the fact that it's a big YouTube channel that's verified, they would still pump this out without a second thought because the algorithm is broken. And without the comment section so that people could look there and read what people have to say about this like whoa there's a lot of negative comments here there are all these things wrong i'll go someplace else to get my information it could be detrimental to the community as a whole but who really gives a shit, right now if you go to the verge's main website where they have once again professional photos taken of this guy putting together a computer poorly the ram is still in the wrong slots fantastic felicima Oh, you gotta love this photo where they show him putting in the RAM in the wrong fucking dim. Brilliance. Sheer brilliance. I might have to steal some of these. So anyway, you would think on The Verge's website there would be more comments of people saying that there's something wrong here. Actually, The Verge has vetted their comments on this story. You will not see any negative comments about this build whatsoever. Once again, this shows journalism at its absolute worst, where they only let you see what they want you to see. Gotta love these Stormtrooper color builds, especially with the dual chamber case, where it's easier to stuff in cables without needing fancy management. You can do a bit more tidying up, but otherwise solid setup. Yeah, no, it's not solid. This is a hot fucking mess. Once again, someone writes solid build. Now that you've done a Windows build, hoping to see a Hackintosh or a Linux one in the future. This guy can't even manage cables or put RAM in the correct DIMM slots and you want them to do a video on Linux. Are you out of your fucking mind? If you want some Linux information, go to level one techs. Go somewhere where people actually know something rather than a popular spam YouTube site. I mean, YouTube channel. I mean, this is not something to get behind or endorse. Never thought I'd see an article like this on The Verge, bravo. This video in this article showing how to put together a computer badly sums up The Verge as a whole. This video is all you need to know about The Verge. That's it. They have the money to produce beautifully shot and lit content, which often fools people into believing that there's more substance there when in all actuality, there really isn't. And that's the best way I could sum it up. The fact that they haven't taken down this video, the fact that comments are blocked, the fact that they are vetting comments on their own webpage shows that they are not to be trusted or to be given any respect whatsoever. That's that. I I'm out of here. I'm done with this. I'm tired. Looking at this video when I haven't slept much, it, it just is. I'm, I'm out of here, man. It, it's just horrible. This is just bad on all levels.